Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the National Shrine of St. Therese. Today's intentions are for those of the members of the Little Flower Society, the Infant of Prague, and some special intentions that we have for birthday blessings for Bruno Bertucci, Daniel Etrade, Belen Reis, and Cheryl Fragade, memorial remembrance for Mamurto Vegas, and a special intention for all our Eucharistic ministers and lectors and support staff here at the Shrine. And I'd like to add a special intention for healing for our own Father Bob Colarisi and Father Joe Etcher, as well as one of our Carmelites who died yesterday, Kevin McBrien. So we bring all of our attentions to the Lord as we begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of us. Coming into the Lord's presence, we ask for forgiveness and healing, especially for the times when we fail to acknowledge the fact that we are the beloved of God. Lord Jesus, you show us how to search out the lost, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you save those who seek you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you nourish us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom in Pope John the Twenty-third have given us a living example of Christ the Good Shepherd, to shine throughout the whole world, grant us that through his intercession we may joyfully pour out on the abundance of Christian charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, realize that it is those who have faith who are children of Abraham. Scripture, which saw in advance that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, foretold the good news to Abraham, saying, through you shall all the nations be blessed. Consequently, those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, who had faith. For all who depend on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not persevere in doing all the things written in the book of the law, and that no one is justified before God by the law is clear. For the one who is righteous by faith will live. But the law does not depend on faith. Rather, the one who does these things will live by them. Christ ransomed us from the curse of the law 
by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might be extended to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. The Lord, the Lord will, will remember, remember his, his covenant, covenant forever. forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The, the Lord will, will remember, remember his, his covenant, covenant forever. forever. Majesty and glory are his work and his justice endures forever. He has won renown for his wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. The, the Lord, Lord will remember, remember his, his covenant, covenant forever. forever. He has given food to those who fear him. He will forever be mindful of his covenant. He has made known to his people the power of his works giving them the inheritance of the nations. The, the Lord, Lord will remember, remember his covenant, covenant forever. Alleluia, Alleluia. The prince of this world will now be cast out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus had driven out a demon, some of the crowd said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others to test him ask him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebul I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through arid regions searching for rest, but finding none, it says, I shall return to my home from which I came. But upon returning, it finds it swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and brings back seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, who move in and dwell there. And the last condition of that man is worse than the first. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> My dear friends in Christ, today we celebrate one of my favorite saints, Pope John the Twenty-Third. It is not common that a saint, someone that we know, has been selected as one of the saints 
that God has placed in our very midst. And so it's with gratitude. And when I think back of the opportunities that I grew up with a, with a Pope that came from very humble beginnings, I'm always reflecting on that to realize that God chooses each and every one of us, regardless of status, but especially from humble beginnings, to do his work. And to me, the message is very clear. That is what Jesus is trying to inflict, in, in, instill in us to help us realize, first of all, to believe that we are the beloved of God. Status in life has nothing to do with it. We are all the beloved. And God uses each and every one of us in order to accomplish his plan. Pope John the twenty-third was a very humble person. He was the third child out of 13. He came as a poor farmer and yet from a family that loved God and instilled the faith in God in each of the children. And each of them responded just as you and I are being asked to respond to the opportunities that God gives to us each day. And I'm a firm believer if I don't share the gifts that God has given to me with others, there's nobody else that can do it. That's what makes us special. Not because of a status that we achieved or accomplishments that we have achieved. It has nothing to do with it. All that counts is that we share what is best in us and the blessings that God has given to us with each other. And Pope John XXIII was that kind of a person. One of the things that he never lost sight of is who God wants him to serve. And that is those who have no status in life, those who cannot say they have accomplished anything because we are all the beloved. And if we ever doubt because we didn't achieve some of the things that we have achieved, that, that others have achieved, we should not never be downplaying that and saying, oh, poor me. Each of us is rich, and God has a special mission and a special gift that only you and I can share with others. And that's what Pope John XXIII is all about. There's so many things that we could talk about. But what struck me most, and I had the opportunity many years ago to be in Rome when he had been already blessed, and there was something in St. Peter's, you know, there's a lot of noise there with all the visitors coming. And then suddenly there was a little chapel on the side where his body has been displayed. And when you walked in there, there was the kind of silence that suddenly overwhelmed you. And it, it didn't give me an opportunity to say anything. You just wanted to be quiet just to be there and to allow God's grace that came through St. John the 23rd, to all the people that came there. And I remember and I was saying, you know, John, help me to become the person that God created in me, just as you shared your beautiful self with all the people that came to you. Pope John the 23rd is so different from so many other people that Jesus chose as his successors. Is very much identified in many ways today with Pope Francis. He too has come from humble beginnings. We don't hear a lot. Something unique that the two of them have in common. At the age of 78, he decided to call an ecumenical council that hadn't existed since over a hundred years. And someone asked him, he says, at your age, why do you want to enter into this phase and do this difficult job? And he said, really, it's not up to me. It is God who chooses and, fall and, and asks us to be his presence to others. And it doesn't matter what the outcome might be. It's only important that you do and share the gift that you have with each other. And you know what? That's the same message for each and every one of us. 
God isn't asking me or you to be somebody unique. He's asking us to share the beautiful self, the beloved that we are, with each other in whatever small or big ways we can do it. So Pope John XXIII must be smiling today. You know, he, because he was so heavy, people made fun of him. And you know, you say, oh my God, how ridiculous. We're all beautiful. In God's sight, we are the beloved of God. The question for us is, do I really believe that? Do you believe that? Because if we don't believe, we do the most stupid things in the world that brings about division and discourse and death and all of those things. And we forget to share the most beautiful part of all that is you and I. So as we come together today once again to remember the example of Pope Francis, the uh, Pope uh, John XXIII, what he would say to us is, be your lovable self, share what's best in you with others, and you got nothing to worry about. All the other things will fall by the wayside because they occupy so much of our everyday situation. And when the day is over, what do we often come up to? Oh, I didn't get this done. I should have done that and all of this. And we lose the joy and the realization that you and I are the beloved of God. And when we come to the Eucharist, Jesus is the, has the same message that he had for John the 23rd that he has for us. Be your beautiful self and bring me to others in whatever small way you can do it. It might be as simple as a smile, as simple as saying hello to someone. Can I do something for you? To be so practical that it's almost unbelievable. Pope John the 23rd is a wonderful example for all of us. And I think when we open our hearts to him, there is a kind of peace that settles in, as it did in Rome when he was laid out at St. Peter's. If we listen, and if we care to stand still and say, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? And in the words of Jesus, love the Lord your God with your whole heart and love your neighbor as I love you. Today we have an example from the Lord through John the 23rd to do just that. Jesus is the awkward shepherd who looks to every need that we have. And so today we place our needs before him. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Ronald, and all our people that believe in the Lord and even those who do not believe that they will come to the Lord. That God's work will always be accomplished by the way we share ourselves with each other. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for fair-minded national and government leaders, especially during this time when we again prepare for elections, that we look at the good of the people and not just what they stand for or to deride them because we don't agree with them. Lord, give us the sense of humility and honesty and truth. For this, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have never heard of Jesus. And we can hardly believe that there are billions of them. So, Lord, let you and I be the messengers to reach out to someone and bring them closer to you. We pray to the Lord. We pray today for all the people that are exposed to so many dangers the hurricanes, the wars around the world, our own conflicts in our own families and, 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 and country and, and cities, that somehow we recognize the fact that we are all God's children and that we respect each other for the way God loves us. For this we pray to the Lord. 
for a moment now, let us place our own petitions before the Lord. And for all of these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we thank you now for listening to all of our needs. And we thank you for reminding us that we are your beloved and that we share that special gift with others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. And now let us pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice from your people, we pray, O Lord, and make what is offered for your glory and honor of blessed John the 23rd a means of to our eternal salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to, to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your daughters and sons. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, and we say the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread in giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, 
as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop, with our bishops, priests, deacons, religious, single people, married people, the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. And let us take a moment to remember them by name. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our faithful spouse, Saint Therese, Saint John the Twenty-Third, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <coughs> deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Thank you. And now let us reach out and share that peace of Christ with each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Let us pray. May the power of the gifts we have received, Lord God, on this feast day of Blessed John the 23rd, fill us with its effects, both to sustain our mortal life and to gain us the joy of unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We greet Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Saint Therese, Saint John the Twenty Third. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. Have a wonderful weekend and. Remember, share what's best in you with others.